Welcome. In this video, we're going to look at functions of two or three variables. Um, an example would be a function of x and y defined as 4 minus x squared minus 4y squared. And we're going to evaluate that first at negative 1, 3. Replace all the x's in your function with a negative 1, all the y's with a 3, so that gives us, it's sort of an easy substitution. We put a negative 1 in place of x, 3 in place of y. Remember to do exponents first. Negative 1 squared is 1 minus 1. 3 squared is 9 times 4 is 36, so minus 36. 4 minus 1 minus 36 is negative 33. Sometimes you will be asked to evaluate functions with a variable left open. Uh, that just means don't plug a number in for that particular variable. So x stays the same. y will catch a 0. 0 squared times 4. That's all 0. So this function at x0 is equal to 4 minus x squared. A function of three variables would be something like f of x, y, z, where it is defined as the square root of x plus y plus z. Let's calculate and evaluate this function for the point 0, negative 1, 8. Put all your numbers underneath, add them up, you get 7. Square root of 7 is irrational, so we leave it in radical form. Maybe the y variable is left open this time. 3 will still go in for x. y stays the same. And 6 goes in for z. Well, that gives us a total of y plus 9 under the radical. A function of two variables could also be defined as an integral where the x and y values are the lower and upper limit of the integral, respectively. For example, if we were to take this function and substitute in the point 4, 0, 4 goes in for x, that's your bottom limit. 0 goes in for y, that's your top limit. The antiderivative of 2t minus 3 is t squared minus 3t. And by fundamental theorem of calculus, we sub a 0 in minus and then we sub a 4 in. 0 minus 4 is negative 4. And for a second example, g of 3, 1, remember x on bottom, y on top, so that's the integral from 3 to 1 of 2t minus 3. Same antiderivative of t squared minus 3t. Remember to evaluate at 1 and then also at 3. Substituting 1 into the antiderivative minus substituting 3 into the antiderivative. That gives us negative 2 minus 0. So that's negative 2. The domain of a function of several variables is the set of all points for which the function is defined. For example, this first one, we're going to find the domain of f of xy, where it's defined as the square root of x squared plus y squared minus 9, all over x. Well, immediately, this catches our eye because we don't want a zero denominator, so x isn't zero. That's going to be thrown out of the domain. Under the radical, though, we've also been told to make sure that this is non-negative. Well, how do we make sure this is non-negative? We put this, all three of these terms, greater than or equal to zero. Bring the nine over, and you get x squared plus y squared greater than or equal to nine. So what does that tell us? x can't be zero, and x, plus y, x squared plus y squared has to be greater than or equal to nine. Well, that tells us that we have the set of all points lying on or outside the circle x squared plus y squared equals 9. That's a circle centered at the origin with a radius of 3. 
but due to the greater than or equal to, you can lie on the circle or outside of it. Also keep in mind x can't be zero, so your domain is a set of all points lying on or outside the circle, except those points on the y-axis. Anywhere on the y-axis, x is zero, and we don't want that. Let's take a three variable function defined as x over square root of nine minus x squared minus y squared minus z squared. First, we don't want a negative under the square root, but because it's in the denominator, we don't want it to be zero either. So be careful here, nine minus x squared minus y squared minus z squared has to strictly be positive we do not underline it in this case because you don't want a zero in the denominator overall. Well, that tells us that if you were to bring all three of these terms over, that nine is greater than x squared plus y squared plus z squared. So this function is defined for all points x, y, z, and I just reversed it here to make it easier to look at. This is a sphere centered at the origin with a radius has to be less than nine. Now this numerator can be any value, so there's no restrictions on the x based on this numerator, but you have to really watch radicals and or denominators. So your domain for this function is a set of all tripled pairs, excuse me, tripled sets of points, ordered triples, there we go, such that the point is inside a sphere of radius three, because square root of nine is three, centered at the origin. Let's also look at a few where we include range. Um, this one, we don't want y to be negative, so y has to be greater than or equal to zero, and that's your domain. The domain is a set of all xy pairs such that the y value is greater than or equal to zero. This is sort of a set notation to write it. There are times when you'll find that instead of a vertical bar, there will be a colon. That's okay too. Now the range, we know that the Y value is restricted. The X value is not. This square root term, the square root of y, it's either going to be zero or something positive. X can run the full gamut of negatives, zero, or positive, and so you have an unrestricted range because suppose this square root of y term works out to one, but your x value is negative 200. You can have negatives, positives, and zeros for answers depending on what you input to x and y. The second example function of two variables, the arc cosine or cosine inverse of x plus y. Let's remember for the arc cosine, back when you were in trig class, you looked at the angle from zero to pi that had a specific x value. Now that's when we were in functions of just one variable. Now that we've got more, we can extend our thought. Okay, now the x plus y argument inside the parentheses that has to go off of the domain of cosine. Well, remember back to your cosine graph where you had a valley-shaped graph? Actually, let me just sketch a cosine. All right, so let's just do one round of cosine. There we go. Remember, its amplitude is one, so it will peak at one. Minimize at negative one. That's what we're looking for as far as the domain for the inverse. 
this argument has to be between negative 1 and positive 1 inclusive. The range is the set of all numbers. Now remember, for the arc cosine, we always looked between 0 and pi for the angle that had this particular value. So that's why your range is still zero to pi because arc cosine or cosine inverse is defined from zero to pi. Reach out if you need any help. Um, I hope this helps. And I didn't mean to overkill the explanations on some of these. Um, it's just, it takes a little bit to get adjusted to the way these look and how to work the domain and range problems. But anyway, reach out, email, phone, office hours, and I'll do my best to help you out.